Okay, now guys, now our topic is all about care of mother and newborns and uh, pediatrics. Okay, so let's start with the mother itself, how we are taking care of those mother who are pregnant. So let us define some terms again, guys, to fully understand our whole topic. Okay, so what do we mean by What do we mean by prenatal? Okay, prenatal or antepartum period, it is the period of time wherein this conception until the baby is born. So, those preparations, uh, being pregnant from the time the patient will pay, uh, the baby will be delivered, it's called the prenatal stage or the antepartum. So, what are the things that we are responsible for this uh, phase? First, for prenatal care, nutrition. So the diet of the mother uh, should be healthy because it will also affect the baby. Then avoidance of toxins. What are those toxins? Okay, so uh, those toxins like uh, infection. Okay, the, if the mother might will get the infection, it will really affect the baby. Also, radiation. Okay, radiation from the X-ray. That's why it's not allowed to do X-ray for the mother because it will affect the baby. It will have congenital effect to the baby. Then you have the exercise. Okay, even you are pregnant. Okay, you are still allowed to do exercise. There are some exercise allowed to the mother. Okay, like Kegels exercise. Okay, Kegels exercise. Kegels. K E G E L. Okay, Kegel's exercise will help the mother to strengthen its uh, her perineal area. Okay, for perineum, so the mother will have ease on delivering the baby. So that is Kegel's exercise. Then preventing complications. Then meeting the pregnant woman's needs, like measuring and recording vital signs. Why uh, it's it is important to measure the vital signs of the mother because some mothers they they end up having this type of condition which we are calling it as preeclampsia preeclampsia okay what do you mean by preeclampsia the preeclampsia is a condition during pregnancy wherein the blood pressure of the mother is will be increased okay so we need to monitor the vital signs for this uh, mother Okay, then obtaining urine samples, then depending uh, uh, depending on uh, the condition of the mother, then helping with the personal needs. Okay, then next is you have uh, meeting the pregnant women's emotional needs. Guys, do you know that being a pregnant okay okay it's not easy it's not easy that's why we, uh, we should honor our mother because the pregnancy stage it's not easy it's very difficult for them because there is a lot of changes happening to their body hormonal changes that's why their mood is on and off then there is a lot of physical changes happening to them so what happened because of these physical changes it will greatly affect their emotions okay their emotions Sometimes they are so irritated, disappointed. Sometimes they are happy. So we don't know. This is brought by the pregnancy. So we should understand them, okay? Especially those male, okay, or father. You should understand your uh, wife. Then uh, after prenatal, we'll go to the labor and delivery. Okay, what is labor and delivery? Labor, it is a process wherein there is contraction. So you, when there is contractions of the uterus, which squeeze the baby downward, forcing his head against the cervix so that it opens or dilates. It's very painful, okay? As per the pregnant, uh, as per the patients who had pregnant, it's a painful process. Then delivery is the process of giving birth to the baby. It uh, Delivery can be vaginal, guys, okay, from vagina, or it can be cesarean section, okay? Cesarean section is they will uh, deliver through a surgical incision from the abdomen. Cesarean is 
uh, what's this? It's not painful. Why? Because they are giving anesthesia to the patient. However, uh, cesarean is costly. Okay, that's why if you are a low earner only, you will prefer vaginal because cesarean section is uh, very uh, costly. Next, after taking care of the mother, why? Bakit nandito na tayo agad? We're lacking something. Sorry. So this care of the baby is after this postpartum care. So after uh, labor and delivery, let's go with postpartum care. So for postpartum care, uh, postpartum means commonly defined as the six weeks after the child birth. Okay. So what are our responsibilities during postpartum care? We need to take the vital signs as ordered. Uh, assisting with transferring and walking because some patients have uh, this cesarean, have surgery, so they have difficulty uh, mobilizing and ambulating, so we should assist them. Then assisting with toileting, okay, observing, okay, what we need to observe, the vaginal discharge. Remember this, guys. So for managing vaginal discharge, this is very important to know if the patient is having bleeding, okay? So we have the so-called acronym RSA, okay, RSA, rubra, serosa, and alba. If you're talking about rubra, guys, rubra, you will see the, the, the vaginal discharge is bright red, okay? Bright red, expect that the vaginal discharge for one to three days, it's bright red, okay? So nothing to worry. If it's still one to three days and you are seeing vaginal discharge of uh, bright red, Okay, it's rubra. Then serosa, four to six days, uh, it is pink or brown tinge in fluid. Okay, color. Then alba, the last is seven to ten days. The color is follows for another week or two, and it's commonly creamy white to yellow in color. So the discharge should be, the normal discharge should be like this. However, if the patient is having still uh, bright red color vaginal discharge, even the patient is on seventh day postpartum already, it means that the patient is definitely bleeding. So you should report it immediately to the nursing in charge. Okay, So you should instruct the patient. If the patient went home, you should instruct her to check the vaginal discharge. Assisting with perineal care. Uh, sits bath. Uh, perineal care, why? Because if the patient, especially the patient, had vaginal delivery, okay, it's very painful, especially if they will do efficiotomy and efficiorapy. Okay, episho. Episiotomy, guys, what they are doing, they are uh, uh, episiotomy is they are is that the perineum. They are Cutting, what is the term? They are cutting from the vagina. So they are cutting the perineum, okay, to enlarge the passage of the baby. However, this is a very painful one. They will do, uh, they will put local anesthesia and it's very painful after. Then after the baby was born, they will repair it. Okay, it's called epi therapy. Ano bang spelling ko? Sorry guys. Efficiorapy.
Tama. Efficiency, guys. This is the repair, okay, of the perineum. Repair of Okay, they, re, they will repair it. If the baby will comes out, then they will repair again the perineum. Okay, but guys, after how many hours, it's very painful. Okay, so to, to ease the pain, okay, or to lessen the pain and the swelling itself, we are as, assisting the patient to do sits butt. Okay, what is sits butt? The patient will sit on a uh, basin, okay, not directly sitting on that, okay, but... Uh, can close to that the patient will sit on that and the patient will uh, uh we will put on that basin uh, warm water okay then the patient will sit next to that okay not directly on the water okay so the steam will uh, be absorbed by the perineum okay in that way it will help to heal the the, the episiotherapy it will uh, lessen the swelling and it will reduce the pain okay so that is sit but then assisting with breastfeeding guys breastfeeding for the baby is very important breastfeeding for the baby is very important Uh -huh. Okay, clear drawings. So, breastfeeding is very important because you know breast milk is important to build uh, antibodies. Okay, colostrum, which is contain which co is contained in the breast milk is very important to boost the immune system of the baby. So we should encourage the mother to do breastfeeding than bottle feeding. We should encourage the mother to do breastfeeding. Okay, see. So we have different types of breastfeeding positions. Okay, breastfeeding, it is feeding a milk, baby milk from the mother's breast. You have the cradle position, you have the side lying position, and you have the football, football position. Okay. So letter A, is th that is that one. So that is cradle position, sideline position, and the football position. Now, the mother supports her breast with one hand. Okay, the thumb of the breast to keep breast away from the baby's nose. The mother insert a finger into the corner of the baby mouth. Okay, so to stimulate the baby from his rooting reflex. Okay, to... Uh, to insert the nipple on the patient's mouth okay the effective sucking reflex okay you will see if the breast milk breastfeeding is effective okay for the baby or if the baby is doing it right okay if you will see that all the areola or this part the blackish color of the 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 nipple of the mother is already all of this part is inside the baby's mouth it means that that is an effective sucking or breastfeeding uh, breastfeeding technique okay the patient is doing it right then bottle feeding okay bottle feeding is an alternative only if the mother has no milk if the mother is sick okay we can give bottle feeding but most of the time we should encourage the patient to have a breast uh, breastfeeding so bottle feeding we are using a formula okay formula milk okay then formula comes into three forms you have the ready to meet powdered and you have the liquid concentrate okay then if we are uh, taking care of the baby okay we should sanitize also their baby's bottles if we are using the uh, bottle feeding okay we have different types of sanitizing bottles you have the boiling you have the bleaching and you have the steaming, okay? Then 
how you will hold the bottle for the baby. You should hold it on this position. Okay, you should uh, make sure that the head of the baby is higher than the body to make sure that the patient will not choke. Okay, and you should hold it in place and make sure that the nipple of the uh, of the baby's bottle, okay, is filled with milk. Okay, fill all of the uh, of that nipple is filled filled with milk. Okay, to prevent air entry on the patient. Then it is also important to do burping. Okay, after bottle feeding or any breastfeeding or any feeding for the baby. Okay, so. But, uh, burping helps to get rid of the air. Most babies burp midway and after a feeding, okay? So we have different types of uh, burping the baby. You have the over the shoulder, okay? You will see in the picture uh, on your lap and on the baby's stomach. Then let's go with diapering, okay? Diapering, guys, okay? Maybe you all know how to do diaper, uh, especially those mom out there. So what is meconium? Meconium, uh, it is a dark green to black tarry bowel movement happen in the first one to two days after birth. So maybe you will notice a color meconium uh, stained uh, stool for your baby. Guys, it's normal. One to two days, it's normal. Okay. Uh, for breastfeed uh, babies, the color of their uh, stool is that the texture is yellow and CD looking stools. They are soft or runny and they, are bowel, uh, they have a bowel movement with every feeding. And most of the time, it is not that foul smelling compared to bottle fed babies. Bottle fed babies have yellow to brown stools, have fewer stools than breast fed babies. Stools are firmer and they have one to two stools a day. Okay, so this is the diaper. Okay, how to put diaper. And this is the other type, the cloth diaper. Then, the front of the diaper is used to clean the genital area from front to back. Okay, I'll show you a video how to do, how to, to fasten and unfasten the diaper. Then, okay, caring for umbilical cord. Guys, it's not allowed to give bath to the baby or to do baby bath uh, if seven to 10 days, okay? If the baby, uh, sorry, uh, if the umbilical cord is, uh, is not falling out, okay? If still there, you are not allowed to give infant bath or baby bath to the baby. Okay, you should wait to fall, fall off the, the umbilical cord. Usually, it will fall off 7 to 10 days. So in caring for the umbilical cord, keep the uh, stump clean and dry. Keep the diaper below the cord. Don't cover the cord because it might moisten the cord and it will result to infection. Then give a sponge bath until the cord falls off. So this is what I'm telling. Do not pull the cord off. Report the following to the nurse. If there is swelling, redness, odor, it means that there is infection and bleeding to the cord and there is fever. Then... Uh, maybe you're thinking why circumcision at this early age. Okay, some uh, some culture they uh, do they are doing circumcision at as early as infancy. Okay, this is their religious uh, belief. Uh, so circumcision cares involves the following: clean the penis at each diaper change. This is very important after bowel movement. You can use mild soap and water, plain water on the circumcised area. Apply petroleum gel dressing. Okay, you get a uh, gauze and then put a petroleum jelly on that. This protects the penis from urine and feces. It also prevents the penis from sticking to the diaper. Use a cotton swab to apply the petroleum jelly and then apply diaper loosely so it will not irritate the penis. Then, uh, bakit nandito itong mga ito? 
So what are the benefits of the breast milk? It will protect the baby from infection. I told you that the breast milk is having a colostrum, okay? And colostrum is very useful for fighting infections. Then uh, breastfeeding provides health benefits. Breast milk is available for your baby whenever baby needs it. And breastfeeding can build a strong emotional bond between mother and baby. Now, actually we will do this as demo also, the bathing. Baby bath is defined as uh, cleaning the baby, the skin of the baby for promoting hygiene and comfort in the home. Okay, objectives is to keep the baby's skin clean, to refresh the baby, to stimulate the circulation, to prevent any skin infection, to closely observe the body for evidence of any abnormalities, and to note infant growth and development, and to induce sleep. Guys, we will all do all this demo together during our face-to-face -face class. So what are the types of baby bath? You have the lap bath, okay? You have the sponge bath and you have the tub bath. So what are the things we need to remember when we are giving bath to the baby? First, we need to prevent the so-called hypothermia, okay? Always remember if the infant, we are giving uh, bath to the infant, we should prevent hypothermia because that hypothermia can kill the infant. So how to prevent hypothermia? You should make sure that uh, the baby is, well, is always warm, okay? So use warm water and warm, warm room and warm water, but quickly and gently, okay? Why? Because the skin of the baby is still fragile. Dry quickly and gently. Always when you do bathing, you should always wash, rinse, and dry. Always like that. Then never leave the baby unattended in a bathtub. The infant is given bath after uh, this one. I'm telling you seven to ten day. It will the cord will falls off. Oh, wait a minute, guys. Types of bath. Okay. Then what is the ideal time you will give bath to the baby? You should give bath to the baby before the second feeding. Okay, so you feed the baby first. So the patient, if, if the baby will, uh, if you will do the uh, baby bath, the patient is not hungry and the patient will not cry. So you should do it before the second feeding. But make sure that you should do it after two hours after feeding because the patient might spit or vomit. Baby should not be bat within an hour he is fed because moving may cause vomiting. There should be a fixed time for bath which will help the baby to form a habit. Okay, usually morning we should do this. Then newborn temperature regulating system is underdeveloped. So measure the temperature of the water to avoid overheating or chillness. It should be 98 to 100 uh, Fahrenheit or 37 to 38 degrees Celsius. Then the clothing should be selected based on the environment and weather. The soap use should be mild and without any concentrated uh, chemicals like hexaclopramine and, uh, and those powders like zinc sterates because it will irritate the respiratory tract. Then, okay, so that is for baby bath. Okay, we will do this baby bath. 
Now let's go with the other needs of the baby. So we finish diaper, bat, batting. Now let's go with the vaccine. Okay, so as you can see in the picture, this is uh, the Philippines uh, vaccination uh, schedule. So as early as uh, at birth, guys, two vaccines were given, will be given the BCG, okay, and hepatitis B. BCG is to prevent tuberculosis and hepatitis B is to prevent hepatitis B virus okay then after one and a half one uh, after one and 1.5 months they will give dpt then two and a half dpt also and three and a half then you have also the oral polio vaccine okay same and then you have also the inactivated polio which is in on the three three and a half months you have the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine okay same same uh, schedule and the measles and mumps it will be given on ninth month and one year old so that's all for it okay for patients food new foods are introduced one at a time to determine the food responsible if the infant has reaction the infant is gradually weaned to cup or her desire for sucking uh, decreases usually around the age year bottle mouth caries can uh, occur when an infant is given a bottle of uh, bedtime sugar from the formula causes erosion of the tooth enamel Now let's go with caring for toddlers, okay? So toddlers, what the age of toddler is one to three years old, okay? One to three years old. So if uh, you remember our discussion for uh, growth and development, toddler, they are, they are most uh, independent. They are most having the sense of autonomy. They want, if they want something, they will do it. If they don't want something, they will say it. Okay. So the toddler tries to assert his or her independence. Okay. Then because of the toddler's newfound independence, parenting can be frustrating and challenging. Then uh, toddler's physical growth slows while motor, social, and language development rapidly increase. Usually, they will use the negativism. What is negativism? They will always say no. Okay? To prevent this, you should limit your... Uh, if you're asking something, you should limit your, uh, your options. Okay? Then ritualism also. What is ritualism is? Ritualism is they are having a pillow, okay? Uh, they cannot sleep without that pillow or might be they cannot sleep without the storytelling. So that is ritualism. While temper tantrums, if they cannot get what they want, they will become aggressive. Okay, for temper tantrums, you will do two things, right? If you remember, Two things you will do for temper tantrums. You ignore, but you observe. Why? We ignore because after that, the patient will be okay or the toddler will be okay. But you observe because the patient might do something like banging his head on the floor or on a hard surface. Then for eating problems, die, guys. Uh, occur in the toddler because of a slower growth rate, a drive for independence. They have food jacks. They want only those foods, which is the French fries, fried chicken. So they only want that. So we should establish our nutritious food plan for them. Okay. So to, to make sure, to ensure that they are healthy. The toddler progresses from finger feeding and tilting the cup to being able to hold a spoon and handle a cup in an adult manner. 
Bacteria forms dental plaque on teeth because of the presence of sugar in foods. By the age of two years, a child often imitates others, okay? And can taught to brush teeth by following example of adults. The toddler should visit the dentist at about two years of age. Then toilet training. Very important on this stage, guys, for toddler. Toddler, uh, toilet training. Uh, both starts with letter T. So it's very important for them to establish toilet training. This is the best time to establish toilet training to this toddler. Then the leading causes of death in toddlers are accidents, okay, involving motor vehicles, drowns, burns, because they are so naughty. They, they can go whenever they want. So if you are not observing them and monitor them, they can have this type of injury. Toddlers should always be secured in a car seat. Okay, when in a motor vehicle, supervision is important. When toddlers are near motor vehicles, then the most common medications, what is the, the I don't know if I have picture here. Uh, The car seat, okay, what is the car seat that is uh, allowed for the baby or for the toddler? So until two years old, guys, you should be, it should be rear view. So you should put the car seat of the baby, okay? So in at the rear or at the back side of the, uh, at the back side of the, what's this, driver's uh, seat, okay? at the front seat, at the back side of it, and the baby is facing, uh, not facing uh, the same with the driver, but reverse. Okay, why? In that way, the baby will, uh, if there is an accident, okay, there will be less injury to the baby's brain. Rear view, we are calling it as rear view uh, baby seat car seat. So the most common medications involved in child poisoning are acetaminophen, aspirin, laxatives, sedatives, tranquilizers, analgesics. We should make sure that the medicine should be out of reach of the children because they are so naughty and they are they, they can reach everything. Then according to Eric's, sorry, now, now let's go with Preschool, okay. For preschool, guys, okay. So if you remember, Erickson told that preschooler they have under initiative versus guilt, okay. So I told you before that this time the patient has an initiative. So you can teach him or her to do household jobs, to discipline her. So that is for preschool. During preschooler years, psychosocial growth is substantial, but physical growth slows, okay? Uh, language develops rapidly during the preschool period, progressing from ability to use simple sentences at age three uh, to telling sometimes long and involved stories by age five. Language development may be delayed because of hearing impairment or physical problems. Then magical thinking and imagination contributes to fears and anxieties of preschoolers. As I've told you before, preschoolers have a magical thinking, okay? Have this magical thinking. They will think that they are super women, super uh, heroes, okay? They are the princesses. That's why... They will imitate always people, okay? Even they will wear your shoes even if it's bigger than 10 times to their feet. So you should always, it is normal for the, for the preschool, okay? Their magical thinking. Preschooler may show verbal aggression by name calling and progression, physical uh, aggression by pushing, hitting, and kicking. So this is, uh, if you notice, when you were a child and you are 
in preschooler, okay, some of your classmates, you will fight with your classmates, you're doing things, okay, to hurt them. This is normal for your preschooler, okay? But you should discipline this one. Uh, you should uh, talk to the, talk to the, uh, your preschool, okay? So she will not do it again because this, as I've told you, this is the best time for initiatives. This is the best time to discipline your child. Even though the preschool uh, child has decreased in erratic appetite, adequate protein, nutritious snacks, and avoidance of foods that lack nutritional value are important. Preschoolers should have annual routine checkups to monitor growth, receive immunizations, and for screening, okay? Silt bed use, wearing uh, bicycle safety helmets, and practicing safe street safety will help in prevention of accidents in preschoolers. Then the preschooler learns to share with family and playmates and in the process after shares infections. To prevent infection, the child is taught to cover his or her mouth when coughing or sneezing. Proper disposal of tissues, correct wiping after body movement, and good hand washing and not to share cups, utensils, food, and toothbrush. For school age, it is six to 12 years old, if you remember that. Then uh, this, according to Erickson, they are under uh, industry versus inferiority. For school age, they are so particular with the school activities with the teacher. So don't uh, contradict them if they are saying things always. They are praising the school, they are praising their teachers because they are their stage, okay? It is normal. Even though family is still a major influence, school children has a need to be accepted by groups of peers, often spend time in activities with children of the same sex, okay? For adolescents, they want to, they are so, they love to go with the other sex. But with school age, they have best friends with the same sex, Okay, and enjoy STEAM sports and completing projects. By allowing expression of food likes and dislikes and by setting good examples, caregivers can help the school age child develop good nutritional habits, okay, to be followed at school and home for meals as well as snacks. That's why in the school, they are requiring the school to serve nutritious food, not junk foods to the children. Then obesity in the school age children can be related to genetics, environments, okay, and sedentary lifestyle factors. A well-balanced diet with adequate calcium and phosphorus, okay, brushing after meals and eating foods containing sugar only at meal times contribute to good dental health. So we should allow the patient, always tell the patient or include the patient's diet, the milk, because it is with sufficient amount of calcium and phosphorus. Then the school age child needs 10 to 12 hours of sleep each night. Then sex education, they can uh, give education for the sex, okay, uh, sexuality, okay, to prevent premarital pre pre sex, uh, then teenage pregnancy. Substance abuse is an ever increasing concern during this stage, okay. Uh, then, especially the use of products that can be inhaled in use of delirians, like uh, alcohol, tobacco. So we should always talk to our school-age children. Safety issues for the school-age child include teaching regarding traffic safety, especially in bicycle riding and skateboarding, seatbelt use, and stranger safety. Then children interest in science creates a fascination with their bodies and how they work. The hospitalized child needs explanation and privacy. The change in school age children's understanding of birth, death, and human body health and illnesses influence the child's view of his own health care. The nurse needs to understand these concepts to plan nursing care for the school age. Then caring for adolescents, guys. Adolescence is 12 years, 12 years 
old to 18 years old. So this is the most challenging stage of growth and development because they are so rebellious, okay? As I've told you before, during the pre-adolescent years, children go through many physical and emotional changes on their way to adulthood, offering pre-adolescent information about their changing bodies and feelings. The rapid growth and the rapid change in their bodies Okay, like the secondary sexual characteristic, like they are having breast, enlargement of the breast, voice box, uh, broadened hips, then broadened shoulders. Okay, these are the secondary sex characteristics happening to them. Then they will have menstruation or menarch. Okay, then they can make a baby at this stage. Then according to Piaget, the adolescent moves from concrete operational thinking to formal operational thought. It means the patient can think of their future. Okay, that's why most of the adolescents at this early stage, uh, age, they can think who they want to be in the future. What are their plans in the future? What are uh, uh, what are their dreams in the future? Then changing sex role stereotypes, geographic mobility, and abundant career opportunities and options add to the adolescent's difficulties in making career choices. Okay, intimacy or mutual sharing of deep feelings. This is where love, okay, puppy love, starting, started. Okay, in different sex, and trying to develop their own sense of self-identity begins the process of separating from family or caregivers. Okay, so if you are uh, not so more supporting their decisions, okay, they will become rebellious uh, and it will become a problem for the family, for the whole family. They will, uh, they will start to go with their Peers, they will have peer pressure, then they will have uh, influence of drugs and vices, then it will ruin their uh, it will ruin their lives. So what we discussed before, okay, you should have a friendly relationship with your uh, children, okay, where with your adolescent children, uh, but you should establish a limitations. Body image and self-esteem are closely related and the adolescent struggles with wanting to be attractive and accepted. That's why most of the patients or most of the adolescents or teenagers is committing suicide because nowadays the social media is teaching us to become uh, physically attractive, okay? So the world will accept us. It's not like that, guys, okay? We should tell to them that, uh, you should not base your personality or your whole being uh, with your physical uh, physical features, okay? Uh, the world needs to accept you of who you are, not because you are beautiful, because of you are handsome, because of your physical features, not like that. You should emphasize this to your children. Uh, adolescents' diets are often deficient in calcium, iron, zinc, vitamin A, D, and B6, and folic acid. These adolescents now need specifically iron, especially those patients who is having menstruation, they need much iron. Then health education in the adolescent needs to include regarding sexuality, sexual responsibility, STI, sexually transmitted infections, contraception, because at this early stage, as I've told you, they can bear child, they can deliver a baby okay so they can make a baby so you should teach them about these things okay to prevent teenage pregnancy premarital sex then in the healthcare facility the adolescent fears loss of control and loss of privacy the nurse caring for the hospitalized adolescent must be sensitive to the adolescent's needs provide supportive care and encourage as much as participation by the adolescent as possible, okay? Then we have the child abuse, okay? Child abuse, it's very prominent in USA and other countries. They are so particular with this because it is uh, always happening, okay? So 
Child abuse is when a parent or caregiver, whether to action or failing to act, causing injury, death, emotional harm, or risk to serious harm to the child. Okay, what is our role as nursing assistant when we found out that this child is being abused by the parents or caregivers? We should report it immediately to the authority. Okay, because another injury might happen to the patients, okay, to the abused one, okay, if you will not report it. So we have different forms of abuse. We have psychological, physical, we have sexual. So what are the signs and symptoms of abuse? Unclean or unsafe living condition. Not all, uh, no parents will, uh, will allow the living conditions is unsafe and unclean. Poor personal hygiene, okay, as evidenced by unclean body, clothes, and both, and, and comb hair, skin irritation, and so on, so on. Loss of weight or dehydration. Multiple unexplained fractures or bruises in various stages of healing. Then burn marks, okay, or scalds. Abrasions from ropes or other bindings. Vaginal bleeding or discharge might be raped. Then excessive sexual curiosity or play, an anxious, fearful, or withdrawn demeanor, uncontrolled medical conditions, and a history of requiring health care for similar injuries. So this is all about uh, caring for mother and pediatrics. Now let's go with care of adulthood. care of adult foods okay So we finished pediatrics, now we'll go to the middle age or middle stage, which is the adulthood, okay? So we have three phases of adulthood, guys. You have the early, you have the middle, and you have the late, okay? We already discussed this actually before. Now let's go with the early young adulthood, okay? So for early young adulthood, this time, okay, you will establish personal and economic independence. So you want more career, you want, uh, you are intimate with the partner, you are intimate with your family, you are intimate with your friends, okay? So this is the stage wherein you are intimate with all of these aspects. Then for physical development, I will not be further onto this. Let's go with health promotion. Health test and screening, routine physical examination. You have dental assessment. You should, uh, as early as, uh, uh, what's this? As I've told you before, as early as 40 years old, you should do this uh, examination, okay? Because this one is 20 to 40 years old, no, the, the early, early adulthood. So uh, you have also nutrition and exercise, social interaction, stress management techniques are essential. For middle age, the age is 40 to 60 years old. Most of this, okay, it's all about you're balancing your work and relationships. Then you are, uh, what's this, leaving a legacy, okay? This part, you are leaving a legacy. You are already 
uh, have your children, maybe you have grandchildren already, you have a good job, you have a boss already of, e, of your company, or maybe you are a uh, uh, boss of, you are a superior already or a senior already. So this is all about middle adulthood. So there's a lot of physical changes which happens in middle adulthood. Like there is, uh, uh, what's this? Medical conditions will now be, will appear, uh, will now be, be visible. So we should check uh, annually our health, okay? So as early as 40 years old, you should check everything for the chronic problems like hypertension, heart disease, and diabetes. Okay, then we are having some, the so-called presbyopia. We already discussed this. Pre presbyopia is long-sightedness caused by loss of elasticity. Usually it is caused by middle and old age. Then we have also presbycosis, sort of loss of sound of high pitch. This is presbycosis, okay? Then at this time also, you will have menopause and you have the andropause for the female, okay? Menopause is the cessation of menstruation. When you feel hot flashes, headaches, feeling dizzy, heart palpitations and aching joints, this is common signs and symptoms of menopause. Okay, so if you have menopause, there is a lot of medical problems will might appear as well, like uh, back pain, hypertension, diabetes. So it's very difficult to have this menstruation. Then for male, uh, we are calling it as andropause. Okay, it is a period of physical and psychological change relating to a male reproductive system. So the common most common is the enlargement of your prostate gland. So you should ch check your prostate gland as early as 40 years old. What are the signs and symptoms that your prostate gland is in, uh, enlarged? You have difficulty or problem with urination, including difficulty starting to urinate and frequent need to urinate during night. Men still produce sperm. Actually, 99 years old, you can still... Uh, make a baby for for male. Then they have this the so called crystallized and fluid intelligence. Okay, crystallized intelligence are acquired store of information, skills, strategies in the middlehood, and, and uh, we have the fluid intelligence. It is the ability to deal with new solutions. Okay, begins to decline in middle adulthood. They have the so-called generativity versus stagnation. It means that they are leaving legacy. Okay, so when they die, they will be remembered by those people. So what are our nursing care? Adequate rest is needed to be able to perform daily tasks. The need for social contact continues. Okay, stress management techniques should be applied and regular health and dental checkups should be continued. Okay, nutrition also is very important. Exercise and weight control, substance abuse prevention, stress management, and recommendations for health screening, like cholesterol screening, prostate examination, mammogram, and pap smear or Papa Nicolo smear. Then lastly, you have the late adulthood, okay? So for the late adulthood, guys, it is a period that begins in the 60s onwards until death, okay? So you should, uh, late adulthood is the time of adjusting to retirement. You are, are already retired. Decreasing strength and health. So your health is failing already. So from normal functioning of the body, now it's failing, okay? Then new social roles and reviewing one's life. For those late adulthood, they always love to review their past life. Uh, before I was a soldier who fought for the 
country. Before I was a doctor who is helping for the poor. So they are always like that. So if they are uh, having a storytelling to you, just allow them because it's uh, in that way they can release their stress. In that way they will uh, decrease their depression. So guys, there is a lot, as I've told you, their system is getting, is, is failing, okay? So all of the normal functions of your body is failing, okay? Now let's go with the... Let's go with the geriatric care. Let's go with the ger care of geriatrics. So what is gerontology? Gerontology is the study of the aging processes and the geriatrics is the care of the aging population. That's why we are in demand in the other countries because that other countries cannot be, cannot bear in uh, caring for this uh, uh, type of patients. They cannot change diapers. They cannot do this uh, perennial care, bathing of these patients. So we are so patient about it. So they need us. So as I told you, their, uh, their health is failing. So all of the normal functioning of your body, what we studied in module one about body systems, all are failing. Now let's have, let's take a look what are our nursing care. So for the changes in the integumentary system, okay, we should protect the person from drafts and cold because they are easily get cold, then uh, feeling cold. Then we should provide sweaters, lap blankets, socks, and extra blankets. Showers or ba bath twice a week is enough, okay? Don't force them to bath every day because they will die if like that because they are always feeling, they are easily get cold and they will feel cold all the time. We should understand them, guys. We will be there soon. Then avoid solar exposure because their skin might be already less melanin. So it will become more sensitive to that exposure. Then clothe dressing appropriately for the temperature. Maintain a safe indoor temperature. Excessive use of soap should be avoided. And apply cream for lubricate skin. For musculoskeletal changes like uh, problems like osteoporosis, osteomalacia, rheumatoid arthritis, fractures, okay, we discussed this before. What we're going to, what are our care is exercise regularly, okay, as indicated. If the patient's having arthritis, don't do exercise at that moment or there is a peak of pain because it will be more painful, okay? So it depends upon. Then eat high calcium diet for those patients who have osteoporosis, guys. Okay, you should encourage high calcium diet like milk, okay? Cheese. So it will help to enrich their uh, calcium in the body. Then limit phosphorus intake, okay? Limit phosphorus intake and hormones, uh, hormones and calcium supplements may be prescribed. Then for nervous system, uh, they have problem like shorter memory. They have forgetfulness. They have slower ability to respond like they are having dementia and Alzheimer's disease, confusion, dizziness, sleep patterns change. So what we are going to do as nursing assistants Uh, advice for hospitalization and encourage visitors. Teach fall precautions, okay? Technique because of this Parkinson's, okay? If you remember Parkinson's, there is problem with the movement, okay? Teach fall precaution, environmental safety, like sufficient lightning, proper chairs for sitting, elevated toilet seats, 
uh, encourage slow rising from the resting position, reduce the risk of fall. Then for circulatory changes, uh, they will have hypertension, ischemic heart disease, problem with clots, then heart failure, peripheral vascular disease, varicose veins, and stroke attack. Okay, what we are going to do, we should exercise regularly, okay, to have include good blood circulation. You avoid smoking, eat a low-fat, low-salt diet. As I've told you, low-salt, low-fat diet for hypertension. Why? Salt attracts water. If attracts water, okay, the blood volume will increase. Okay, if blood volume will increase, there will be increased blood volume. Remember, blood volume is always directly proportional with your blood pressure. Then uh, check blood pressure regularly. That's why they are having their own blood pressure machine in their home. Participate in stress reduction. Why? Because stress will increase their blood pressure. So you should reduce the stress. And of course, maintenance medication. For respiratory system, there will become chronic pneumonia, obstructive pulmonary disease like COPD, dyspnea, and breathlessness. So what we are going to do, guys, we should exercise, oh, deep breathing exercise, avoid smoking, take uh, adequate fluids, prevent pulmonary infections, mobilization, avoid crowds during cold and flu seasons, wash hands frequently. For digestive, okay, they may might have problem with speech, chewing, and swallowing. That's why they always ask for soft food, constipation, colon gas, and fecal impaction. They may have diarrhea, reflux or hernia, fecal incontinence, prolapse rectum, dysphagia, okay, dysphagia and anorexia. What we are going to do? We use ice chips, okay, ice chips. Then mouthwash, brush, massage gums daily. Eat small frequent meals if they are vomiting. Eat high fiber, low fat diet. Limit laxatives. Toilet regularly. Drink adequate fluid. We advise them. Then for appetite, serve food attractively and different types of food. Make it colorful and attractive. Then for urinary system, might have they will have renal insufficiency, urinary incontinence, urinary tract infection, encourage prostate, uh, sorry, it's encourage prostate, and large prostate and sexual dysfunction. So what are the nursing care we need to do? We should reg regular supervision, ready access to toilet, drink adequate fluids. Avoid bladder irritants like alcohol and caffeine. Practice pelvic floor muscle exercises. Maintain perineal hygiene. Skin should be dry and healthy. And we should clean under clothes. Then for reproductive system, Okay, their hair, most of their health problems for female breast cancer and cervical cancer for uh, painful intercourse, then vaginal bleeding and vaginal itching and irritation. So uh, for male, prostate cancer and delayed erection. So what are nursing care, health and sexual counseling? And we have also advice about personal hygiene. So this is all about care of mother until adulthood so and maybe 